Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to talk about nested if statements. I'm going to show you how you can make them and more importantly how you can avoid them. Because there's other functions that you can use that can make your formulas more efficient because nested if statements can get pretty messy and ugly especially if you're dealing with a lot of criteria. So in my example today I've got a data set that shows cardholder spending by store and by category. And so let's say I want to calculate how much Bob has spent on home repair since the start of 2021. I could create a pivot table, of course, to summarize this, but let's say I want to put this into a formula. I'm going to use a, a helper column to calculate those, those totals where I could potentially sum that up later on. So with, with an if statement, let's start with just the first criteria. Say, okay, if the cardholder is equal to Bob, and then if that's true, I'm going to create another if statement. Say, okay, now if the category is also equal to home repair and then I'm going to get within another uh, if statement here saying okay if all that's true now let's also check the date so if this is greater than a date of let's say 2021 one one so if all that is true then we get another value of true argument in this case I'm going to set the amount so I'm going to say okay if this is true and if this is true and if this is true then return the value in call me otherwise return zero so i'm going to close that but now i'm within this next if our if statement here so i got i got to put that as zero as well to close that one out put zero in this this first one as well and now i've completed my nested if statement and it returns the value of forty dollars and sixty six cents now for the, if i were to copy this down it's going to apply this calculation to other values as, as well. And here we can see there was another instance where Bob spent money on home repair. So I could do this for the entire column, copy it all the way down, and calculate it um, out this way, as opposed to, let's say, doing a pivot table. So that total, you know, comes to 167.98. So now, obviously, this isn't very efficient. We're using a helper column, using up um, space that you may not want to want to use but that's in essence how you could use a nested if statement now obviously you could add more conditions on here and that's the danger with these if statements they can get really complicated and let's say you created other rules to say okay if it's within here create another if statement or you know it, it can get get really complicated really quickly so that's the first option is using an if statement right but I'm going to show you another way and that's using the and function I'm still going to use an if statement, but I'm going to show you a way to tidy it up a little bit. So I'm going to start with that if statement again, except this time for my, my logical test, think of this is where all your criteria is, I can use an and statement. So I'm going to use and and say, you know, this is where I'm going to put all my, my rules. Say, okay, if the cardholder is equal to Bob, if the category is home repair, and if the date is greater than 2021, one, one, close all that out. If all of that is true, then return this amount, otherwise return zero. So it gives me the same result. If I were to copy it down, you know, I'm gonna get the same total, 167.98. So it works the exact same way. The difference is here, we've got an and statement. So everything's all nicely within that one one function as opposed to here we've got these nested if statements we've got to close all these um, uh, functions up later so it's not not ideal so in terms of space it, it doesn't really save a whole lot but it makes your makes your formula a bit cleaner now I'm going to show you another option and that's using an array formula so an array formula is really cool because it can combine the same sort of logic but be a lot more efficient so rather than setting up all sorts of if statements, I can just straight away type in my equal sign for my formula and start evaluating this criteria. And I'll show you how. So I'm going to set cardholder again equal to Bob. And I'm going to multiply this by whether this criteria is true, where this is equal to home repair. I'm going to multiply that by this criteria. Say, so, okay, if this is greater than the date, 2021, 1 and 1. Close that out, multiply that by this, this value. And so I'm going to show you how this works. 
So if I go to formula, evaluate, what it's basically doing is evaluating each one of these criteria to say, okay, Bob's equal Bob. That's that's true. And if it's true, it, it's going to equate to a value of one. If it's false, it'll be zero. So if everything's true, you're doing one times one times one times the amount. So this is true, right? So that's why we get that one. One times one is one. If this is true, which it is, that's going to be a one. One times true is one. And then one times the amount gives us that total 40.66. So with an array function, you know, we can do this um, easily. And let's say I wanted to apply this against my entire range, which goes down to row 110 here. So what I can do is just expand this out to be 110. D110, A2 to A10, and then E2 to E110. Now it automatically expands out like this, and again, I'm going to have the same result at 167.98. Now one thing I could also do to make this easier is to add a summation at the beginning of this. So put all this within those brackets. Hit enter and now I've got it all within just one formula so I don't have to create this whole whole helper column anymore I can just tabulate it all in here another option is some product and normally this function is used for you know multiplying arrays against each other but it can work in the same way as an array so if you do some product you know always open this up with two parentheses because I'm doing the same thing as with an array and I'm going to multiply this again. So same sort of steps here. You know, this is equal to home repair. This is greater to than a date of 2021, one, one. Just want to make sure that we close this out properly. And then multiply this by the amount and then close this out a second time. So we've got that, that 40.66 correct. And again, we're going to expand this out to B110, D2 to D110, and then A2 to A110, and then E2 to E110. The key thing with these arrays, you want to make sure that they are the exact same um, the same size. And so as you can see, the same exact result, 167.98, as with the array. So again, similar um a similar sort of setup you could use an array you could use some product with array you just got to remember to add that sum at the beginning but it will work the same way as some product so you could if you want to create a an extra column then you could use the and statement but if you're trying to get it compact into just one number then you could use an array with a sum uh, embedded within a sum calculation or you could just use some product as well the key thing with some product is you want to um, open with two parentheses and close with two parentheses because what it's going to do is it's going to do the same sort of multiplication and we just want to make sure it's all embedded um, within that one formula. So that's some of the ways that you can use um, some of the strategies you can use to avoid nested if statements. Um, in some cases they may be unavoidable depending on how you're structuring your formula but you know using things like the AND function, using arrays, using some products they give you a lot more options as to, you know, what you can do and how you can structure your formulas so they're a bit easier to um, make changes to later on or, you know, if you need to have someone audit them or um, uh, update them at a later point.